So some examples of changes that were not systemic are things like you know, raising standards. That's, standards weren't the problem. Everybody's in favor of raising standards, but we weren't even meeting standards we had before. It's not just assessment. It's not just a new approach to uh, instruction. It's not paying teachers more or extending the school day. It's probably a combination of things that make sense in the hands of people who are implementing that change. So another aspect that I'm uh, convinced is important in systemic change is the involvement of the community. And uh, you know, if, if I, Adam Urbanski, uh, union official, once said, you know, there's no idea so good that a teacher can't make it fail. Now he was a teacher advocate, but his point was, you know, you, there's no idea that's so good that it will succeed on its own. You, you, for something to succeed, it really needs uh, the people who are implementing to believe in it and to understand it. Uh, partly because there will be bumps along the way. It will get rocky. And if you don't have ownership, then as soon as it starts to get rocky, they're going to revert to what they did before. And what happens in most attempts at, cha at piecemeal change is that you start moving it in one direction, and then you know, that, that effort stops, and ultimately the system heals itself and forces that change back out. And most attempts at change go in two years later, and you'll see nothing, no effect. But if you can really change the culture and the way people think and the way they talk and the way they think about what they do, then you can you have a chance at doing important things. And not just an important thing, but a whole series of things that add up to significant improvement. So that's, uh, that's kind of my thoughts on that.